So, who is the curator? Other than the fact that he lives in Rome and is some kind of a supernatural avatar of death, we don't know a ton about him. That said, there are a couple of clues already pointing to his identity. Let's take a look at them and see what we can discover. 1. His costuming is pointedly retro. The bowler hat and long coat feel like a late 19th century ensemble. This doesn't mean that he was a real person who died back then and then took on this job, but he certainly feels a strong connection to that time period. 2. Note the compass he's carrying. The exterior of it is 100% brass, which suggests that it's a naval compass. Historically, most things used on boats are made out of brass, because brass can't rust. 3. Whenever he's talking about people, he refers to them as souls. You can tie this into the idea that he's a soul collector, and that's the only part of them that concerns him. But there's another interpretation. When talking about naval accidents, people are usually referred to as souls. X number of souls lost, X number of souls saved. The popular Morse code distress symbol, SOS, is a contraction of the term, save our souls. 4. Take a look at the special edition map that shows the locations where each of the first four games are set. There's something funny about the map, in that none of the countries are labeled, but the major bodies of water needed for navigation are. This is a naval map. 5. The first story that the curator chose to tell was about people on a diving trip who get waylaid and travel to a ghost ship, a tale of the mysterious seas. 6. He's always there when people are possibly about to die, creating the impression that he's a soul collector of one kind or another. As you can see, all of this points to the curator himself being closely associated with boats and waterways. So he's a Grim Reaper type figure who is themed around boats. Put all of this together and you've got a pretty clear suggestion that the curator of stories may have, at one point, been Charon, the ferryman who carries the souls of the dead across the river Styx to Tartarus. Is this a bit of a stretch? Sure. But there's two clues directly pointing at this conclusion. The first is the obvious one. At the start of Anthony's hallucinations in Little Hope, the name on the bus goes from being Faraman to Ferryman, a clear reference to Charon. Of course, this could just be a reference to Anthony's journey in the game, carrying Megan's spirit with him until he can finally help her cross over to the other side, or fail to do so. There could be a second meaning to the name, however, referring to the literal Charon, rather than a figurative one. The other clue isn't actually in the game. I mean, it is, but you can't see it normally. Right outside the curator's library is this statue, which, while it doesn't have a great amount of detail to it, seems to be a Greco-Roman style depiction of a god. Could this bearded guy in a toga be Zeus? There's no way to know yet, but there's enough evidence to start pointing in that general direction. Maybe all of the lightning outside the window in House of Ashes is evidence that the gods are kind of ticked off at Charon for not doing his job as well as he should. Anyway, you can bet I'll be excited to see if any clues turn up in House of Ashes and beyond. And we're going to revisit this subject every time we get a new piece of evidence, one way or the other. I've been the Hidden Object Guru, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. Special thanks go to my patrons Marissa, Desire, Eduardo, Joanne, and Brian. If you'd like to support the channel so I can continue making videos like this one, check out the Patreon link. If there's any topics you'd like to see covered, be sure to mention them in the comments section below the video. See you back here for more dark pictures, but until then, au revoir.